Okay, so in this lesson of the tutorial, we're going to go ahead and make the seat for our car. And as you can see here, I simply just downloaded an image from Google that I uh, have gone and placed in the, in the Maya in our front window. And <clears throat> I think it's going to make much more sense here if we go ahead and use ZBrush simply because I can pretty much get the work done faster and so what you see here is I'm simply just gonna you know do a base block out and get like the general shape of the seat and um, just adding some some edge loops where I need to you know add the edge loops and then I'll go ahead and do the rest of the work pretty much inside of ZBrush because it's just gonna make it that much faster to go ahead and make the seat and right now you can see that I'm just basically shaping the <clears throat> the cube that we have in here um, to resemble you know what the seat's going to look like in terms of the uh, the base design. And this doesn't really, you know, take that much work. It just takes a little bit of um, <coughs> poly editing and vertex shaping. And as you can see, I'm only going to mirror uh, model one side of it, and then, you know, usually I'll just go ahead and mirror it over, and then duplicate here for the bottom of the seat. And you can see, you know, pretty much right away that you have you know your your basics of a seat and it's already looking okay and, and pretty decent and now we're going to go ahead and export it out so I can you know take it here take this into ZBrush and begin sculpting our seat. And it just takes a little um, a minute to load ZBrush. And right away you'll see that I go up a couple different subdivision levels. And this is just to add a little bit more resolution because our seat has come out, you know, pretty pretty low res. And it's gonna be a little bit hard to sculpt on that very low res of, of a model. And so we need to go up a couple subdivision levels so that we can start adding some detail to the seat. And to do this I'm just typically gonna use, you know, my standard brush, my Damien standard brush, the pinch brush, and the smooth brush. And it just takes a little bit of time and, and patience to basically get, you know, what we want. And here I'm just going to put my concept in, on the other screen that I'm using so I can make sure that I have a something to look at while I go ahead and sculpt it. And right now you can see that I'm using the Damien Standard Brush to go ahead and <coughs> cut out the detail for the seat here.
and you can see that I'm working on the bottom portion of the of the cushion here and trying to get that middle detail under the seat here And now I'm just basically trying to add those folds onto the onto the top cushion there. And that's where you can see it, you know, doing this in my it probably would have taken <coughs> a little bit longer than than usual to try and model all those details and if we take and do this in ZBrush it's actually that much easier and pretty much that much faster to go ahead and model exactly what we need And you can see now I'm just simply trying to cut in the detail here of those <coughs> little um, little folds. And I'm using the pinch brush here to tighten up those creases. And now I'm just trying to add the little bit of detail here on the bottom portion of the seat. And, and this just takes a little bit of time and um, a little bit of effort to, to go ahead and get all the detail onto the seat that we need. But as you can see, it's, it's mainly the standard brush and um, the Damien standard brush and the smooth brush, the pinch brush. And you can see on subdivision level one there that it's still somewhat low res. I mean it's definitely not a um, not the original Maya uh, resolution. And that's because I deleted you know two of the subdivision levels off and that way I can have a decently resolutioned seat and then whenever I export this from ZBrush it's still going to maintain all that that detail and you can see I'm just you know working on the sides here It's looking pretty good so far. I'm just trying to block in the last bit of detail here. I'm using the move brush to to go ahead and try and f form the, 
the seat a little more. And I'm just doing a little bit of final editing here. And you can see pretty much in no time that you can, you know, with inside of ZBrush, you can get that seat done fairly quickly. Within about 10 or 12 minutes or so, we were, I've been able to actually go ahead and model that seat. And there you can see our, our lowest subdivision level isn't necessarily that high and it should work whenever we go to render it here in Maya. And there I was just checking to make sure that uh, the lowest um, level of subdivision is still going to hold all the, or maintain all that detail that we've actually put into the <laughs> into the sculpt here. I'm just going to go ahead and start doing our final touch up here before we go ahead and export it. And I'm just trying to make sure that I have, you know, like no faceted faces and no um, hard edges. I'm just trying to make it as smooth, smooth as I possibly can before I go ahead and export this. And I'm just double checking the geometry here, and that's that's okay. I mean, it's not super high, and it should be fine once we go to export it here to take it back in the Maya. I just double wanted to double check to make sure it's going to maintain all that detail. 
or most of the detail before we take it back into Maya. Since the seat will be, you know, somewhat obstructed with the windows and and all the other detail that's going to be in the car, the seat doesn't have to be a 100% detailed seat. It just has to be close enough that we can, you know, add a texture and whenever it renders it'll look good. I mean, I'm definitely not going to, you know, re-topologize the seat because there's you know, pretty much no sense for me to go ahead and do that. And there you can see that our seat is, you know, pretty much modeled. 